Good morning, everybody. This is Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. Today, we're going to be covering all of the news that's coming out. Specifically, we're going to be covering Oron, his sword that's going to be releasing, and of course, the new Trials of Reckoning gear. Uh, unlike my normal news videos, since there's a lot of new players in the community right now, I'm going to read the news and then we're going to go in detail on the equipment that's releasing. We're going to talk a little bit specifically about Oron as well, kind of to give the new players just an idea on whether or not this should be something they should be chasing, whether they should be worried about if they should do it, and what they can expect. All right, so for those experienced players out there who kind of know what they are getting into already, we are just going to quickly go through basically the news. Uh, we're going to be getting that 6700 Vizior uh, 2 UR tickets and an MR Plus guarantee ticket. That's going to be coming on the 31st. Uh, Oron is going to be coming out with Susteki Dene and A Place Unknown. Uh, there is a global enhancement buff to Steki Dane. Uh, the global enhancement is going to give defense piercing rate up and accuracy up for Titus. So previously this card was really powerful for Titus. And I think with the way that they're building it right now, it's going to be even better. If you're a new player out there and you're looking at this card and you're looking at your team composition, you're really going to have to weigh whether or not this is going to be valuable for you right now, whether Titus is a unit you're investing in long term. If he is, and I think he's an OK unit to invest in long term, this card may be OK for you, but there's probably other cards that are going to take kind of more mileage for your money, I would imagine. Uh, we're also going to be getting the free card, A Place Unknown, which is going to give Missile Up and Dexterity Up, as well as uh, Accuracy Up at max level for water type units. And it's going to give the individual unit Agility Up. Again, pretty good card. Uh, this card I'm not super stoked for. I'm not going to be, you know, like, oh, I can't wait to use this card. It's just going to be a VC that I'm going to probably max out relatively easily, since I do believe uh, we will be getting a lot of shards of it for free. And I do think it's just going to be pretty easy to max. And I don't think it'll be something that everybody should be incredibly focused on. Of course, we do have the Oron challenge missions coming out. Uh, nothing really unexpected here. Uh, what's interesting is that Ziza EX, Eilina EX is coming out. So we're going to talk a little bit about them in the coming days. And maybe we'll get a little bit specifically into Oron as well. But Ziza EX and Eileen EX, if JP is anything to kind of rely on, not the hugest deal uh, for global. And again, those rainbow broadstones are so blocked off for resources. The question you have to ask yourself is Ziza and Eileen really the units you want to use those on? You have like Stern, for example, who might be a better candidate. Or if you had just pulled Oron, you probably want to use it on Oron. Now, we do have some new campaign quests. We're, of course, going to get the Anniversary Part 2 login bonus. Uh, we're going to get the Anniversary Celebration quest. And we're going to get Chapter 13, Scene 1. Of course, uh, we're going to be getting a boat ton of Vizior uh, login tickets, which you should be doing every single day. Uh, it will build up to a 10 pull. Uh, other than that, uh, we're going to be getting a first anniversary celebration quest to do every day, which uh, is going to give great items. No rainbow bronze stone from this, as far as I can tell, but you will get 500 Vizior on your first clear. Uh, Final Fantasy X collaboration campaign, so it does show Oron here. Uh, we're going to get 80 free Oron shards, which is to be expected. Uh, Place Unknown is going to be given to us. Another 2500 Vizior, so if you're hurting for Vizior, there's a lot more coming. Uh, the event quest is going to be updated here, so uh, let's see here. Materials necessary to enhance Oron will be added, basically, is what they're adding. Uh, and then the EX Quest 2 is going to show up with Shimmering Blade, which we will get into here in just a moment, and we'll kind of talk about the stats on that and uh, whether or not you should be chasing that or not. Uh, finally, we do have Trials of Reckoning coming. Now, this is going to be the first thing Kind of where I'm going to go a little bit new player specific. Uh, Trials of Reckoning is a really difficult event. Uh, it's something where you can do it if you're not the strongest player, but it's really designed towards end game focused players. It's based off of score. It's based off of how effective your score can be. So 
if you're newer to the game right now and you are looking at this Trials of Reckoning event, it might be best not to get your hopes up to be like, I'm going to go get a plus five piece of gear of this because realistically, that's probably not going to happen. Even uh, me, uh, because I don't play as hardcore as a lot of people, uh, even I sometimes have difficulty with Trials of Reckoning. There's a lot of nuances to take into account. There's a lot of strategy involved. It's very difficult PvE content. So again, don't worry if you aren't able to get a plus five piece of gear from it. There are a couple perks that it does appear to be a two to three week long event. So it's possible if you're doing the lower tier Trials of Reckoning that you may be able to get a plus five. Uh, since a lot of it is just farming the lower stages in order to get tickets. Uh, we're going to have to wait to see. I'll definitely kind of do a deeper dive on it when it does come out, because, of course, people are going to want to know optimal setups and stuff for this. But basically, the big thing with this is that it's going to give you a really powerful magic defense accessory, and it's an accessory that increases 10% uh, magic resistance at plus five and it's going to give critical damage plus 15. Again, we'll show this on World of Calc here in just a second to show all of you the specifics. What I'm more interested in is the two bottleneck items which are going to be available from the Trials of Reckoning, which are, of course, the Rainbow Broadstone and the Blossom of Paradise. For me, the Rainbow Broadstones right now are the biggest bottleneck for anybody's account, and I think these are the most important items, even if you're not interested in the accessory which I could understand for some various reasons. I think the Rainbow Broadstone is still incredibly important to chase. So are the Blossoms of Paradise. I would definitely go in and go after those. Now, coming down here, of course, there are special titles that you can win for pursuing this. Uh, some of them are really cool. You're going to get guild ranks. You're going to get like all of these like rankings, right? Because it's all about score. It's all about, you know, uh, how good you can do in this event, how effectively you can farm it, how effectively your guild can farm it. Uh, the bonus units are going to be Titus, Yuna, and Oron for XL, Aziza, Glacella, and Laswell for large, Grace and Nasha for medium, and Mont for small. And then we do have vision card bonuses. Uh, Steki Dane is going to be XL, Dragon King Bahamut is going to be XL, Place Unknown is large, Venrir is medium, Val of Love is small, uh, Frozen Icewing is small, Defiling Curse Malbro is small, and Side Chick is going to be small. Pretty much, I would say uh, about what we expected. Uh, it does show kind of. It does kind of go into like the specifics on what you can expect. Uh, you can get like a plus two version from the polls. Uh, if you're new to the game, I would definitely read through this because trials of reckoning are going to be something that you're going to be seeing coming up over and over again, and it's something you may want to prepare for in the future down the road. You can see they're showing all of the rewards here all of the guild medals. <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, let's change gears though. Let's talk specifically about the characters that are coming out. Let's talk about the units. Uh, let's get uh, down and dirty real quick. So uh, if you guys aren't familiar with World of Calc, make sure you check out World of Calc today. Uh, it's definitely one of the best resources. Bismarck, a very dear friend of mine, uh, is the one who runs the actual website. Uh, so there's a couple things to look at here. Uh, so this is the Shimmering Blade. Now, the Shimmering Blade is the weapon that can be dropped from EX2. Uh, it's going to be a great sword. It has Assault, Aim, and Critical. The Aim is going to give 15 Accuracy. The Assault is going to give 161 Attack. Critical Hit Rate is going to give 20. The Plus 5 version is going to give Slash Attack 15 and Ice Attack 30. The question is, should you Plus 5 this? If you're a new newer player, how important is it to get this? Basically... If you're pulling for Auron, if you're going to use Auron, this is the weapon that you need. There hasn't been a repeat in JP, so if you can get a plus five of this now and you're planning on using Auron, this is the time. If you have other units, this weapon is not the best, right? It's just kind of like supplemental. What makes this really powerful is the Ice Attack 30 because of Auron's Ice Element. And there's not a lot of Ice Greatsword users out in the world. Oron, as far as I know, is the only one. So again, it's very Oron specific. I would say it's going to be okay just to do the mission and get the items and then maybe skip it if you aren't planning on chasing Oron. Now let's talk about Oron himself. Uh, a lot of people 
out there kind of look at Oran as like this really powerful character from Final Fantasy X, and they're saying, should I be pulling for him? Kind of the biggest consensus that I can find so far is that most people probably shouldn't pull for Oran. If you are new to the game and you're free to play, Oran is probably not the right choice for your account. He's a good unit if you have an ice composition team, and if you really know what you're doing. He's like a piece in a puzzle. He's not going to be a leading man. He's not going to be a Yuna that's going to destroy your opponents. He's not going to be something like a calculator that's going to be essential for farming on multiple stages. He's going to be a cog in an ice composition. That is basically going to be his sole role. He's going to deal damage. That's pretty much it. Uh, he doesn't have anything particularly amazing that sets him apart. Uh, he does have, of course, his EX job. Uh, he has soldier sub job, so he's going to deal a lot of damage. You can see that, you know, he deals a lot of ice damage. He does have a two hit multi strike 100% hit attack, which if you are taking him in raid is going to be very effective. Again, though, you have to consider if you're taking him into raid, you're taking it in an ice composition, which means you already have an ice composition built. So that again kind of lies the problem. Now, personally, I'm going to be pulling for Oran because I love Oran as a character. I think he's an incredible character and I absolutely love him. Do I think I'm going to use him a lot? Probably not. I do have a nice composition that I can use him in, but on his own, I don't see him being the God tier ice unit descending from heaven that uh, everybody has wanted. He kind of reminds me uh, if you are a returning player, uh, he reminds me quite a bit of Delita where he's kind of this second released unit that's kind of a letdown, right? After Agrius, right? If Yuna's Agrius, Oron is Delita. That's kind of what this reminds me of right now. Uh, finally, we do have the Tidus Necklace, which is coming with the Trials of Reckoning. Uh, now, this is going to have a vital aim and barrier form. The barrier actually gives a lot of spirit and magic defense, right? So it's going to give 16 spirit for the barrier form. It gives dex 20, which is also good. The aim form gives accuracy 10. I would not probably get this for the aim form just because if you're equipping it in accuracy accessory, there's going to be better accessories to equip. You're going to want this for the barrier, especially if you're going for the plus five because you're going to get that increased magic resistance 10%. If you are a newer player and you can't get the plus five, I still think this could be worth it. Get a plus one, get a plus two, get a plus three, because especially if you're building Tidus, which you should be if you're a newer player, uh, the increased critical damage is going to be really good for Tidus. And it's not, you know, it, it, it's not Ziza's Bells, right? Like nobody's here saying this is Ziza's Bells, but it's a pretty good piece of gear. It's solid. Uh, it's a good way to build your account and start your account. And so I would recommend uh, checking it out. I think if you can get the plus five, there are gonna be situations where it's probably best in slot for multiple characters. Of course, depending on the situation because everything in this game is situational, but that's kind of where I'm at on all this. Uh, over the next couple of days, I am planning on doing a Ziza EX, Eileen EX video. We'll talk about whether or not you should pull for Oron. We're also gonna be releasing the Frederica a voice actor interview with Rochelle as well from the community live stream. I hope all of you guys are looking forward to it. I'm going to go peace out and head to bed right now. Uh, I don't stream on Mondays. Oh, I got my whole, I got it all mixed up. You just, <laughs> but I do stream on poll night on Tuesday. I will be pulling on Wednesday with Oran J though. We're going to be doing a poll competition. So I will be there for the Tuesday night reset, but I will not be pulling that night. So just a heads up for all of y'all out there. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day, everybody.